Hello students, today we are going to talk about nucleic acid probes. Nucleic acid probes are either a single stranded DNA or an RNA with a strong affinity towards a specific DNA or RNA target sequence. This affinity and complementary sequence allows binding to specific regions of target sequence of nucleotides. They uh, can be labeled with any kind of fluorescent molecules, photochromatic compounds or isotopic labeling can be done to detect these nucleic acid probes. Their length may vary from 10 to 1000 base pair, commonly used are 14 to 40 base pair in length. And there is a stable pairing required with 80% match within a fragment of 50 base pair. Now, we can see that any kind of DNA which can be digested with the restriction enzymes and these separated fragments can be identified with the help of a labeled probe. So this is a generalized idea of what is the usage of nucleic acid probes. Now depending on the nature hybridization probes, uh, these nucleic acid probes are also known as hybridization probes because they are used in the process of hybridization to identify the unknown sequence present either in the DNA or RNA or in any kind of gene. So these are also known as hybridization probes and they can be divided on the basis of their nature into DNA probes, RNA probes and oligonucleotides. DNA probes can be synthesized by cell-based DNA cloning or PCR methods while RNA probes can be synthesized by transcription from insert DNA cloned in suitable vectors and oligonucleotides can be synthesized by chemical methods. If we talk about their length, uh, length of the DNA probes, they are they vary in their length from 0.1 kb to hundreds of kb. Uh, but most of the time in PCR products, they are greater than 20 kb. While hybridization probes while uh, DNA, RNA probes are single stranded, usually up to a few thousand to nucleotide long, and oligonucleotides they can be synthesized in the length of 15 to 50 nucleotide long, depending on uh, the method in which they are being used. And uh, after synthesis, uh, there is a, a procedure labeling, and uh, DNA probes can be labeled on PCR based methods while RNA probes can be labeled by runoff transcription from cloned DNA and oligonucleotides can be labeled through end labeling process. We will further talk in detail about this labeling method in upcoming slides. So uh, this uh, classification is based on the uh, nature of probe, whether it is DNA, RNA or oligonucleotide. Now there is another, one more classification of probes depending on whether they are homogeneous or heterogeneous a prop preparation is said to be homogeneous when all prop molecules are the same for example if we want to um, detect the abundance of c4 transcript in a particular sample then we will use the prop which target the c4 oncogen cdna molecules so the prop uh, uh, preparation will be homogeneous but in heterogeneous props may be uh, vary in their sequences or uh, there, be, there may be a preparation of closely related props. For example, uh, in preparation of a subtraction library, the goal is to identify mRNA sequences that are unique to one population of cells by subtracting or removing all sequence expressed in common with a controlled population of cells. So crops may be homogeneous or heterogeneous depending on the type of work we want to do. One more classification of props is on the basis of uh, um, procedure used to label them. Uh, on, on that, they may be end labeled props or continuously labeled props. End labeled props, uh, end labeling can be done at 5 prime end or 3 prime end. To label 5 prime end of a prop, generally the kinasine reaction is used in which uh, gamma phosphate from ATP is being transferred to 5 prime and uh, to connect uh, any kind of label molecule. Another one is uh, 3 prime labeling in which terminal transferase uh, uh, can be used to transfer the particular label molecule to 3 prime uh, free hydroxyl end. 
Now, second method is continuously labeled props. Continuously labeled props in these uh, labels molecules are added continuously on the backbone of the prop. Uh, this kind of labeling method is used in the PCR or some cross linkage of heptane or enzyme directly added to the backbone of the prop molecule. Now, the choice between end labeling and continuous labeling depends on whether the probe is DNA or RNA, whether the probe is single-stranded or double-stranded, and whether the probe, is, if double-stranded, has a resist or protruding 5 prime or 3 prime L. So uh, next, we will talk about the selection of labeling system. Uh, because probes are the molecule which are going to target particular sequence, either in the DNA or RNA. But uh, they should be labeled with certain kind of identifying system through which we can identify where the probe has been uh, target the sequence. So uh, that, dep uh, that, de that depends on the sensitivity and resolution which, which type of work we want whether the probe is DNA or RNA. Now method of label incorporation whether end labeling or continuous labeling and prop stability after labeling is one of the important criteria which should be uh, taken in consideration now type of hybridization methods whether the methods are being used in situ phage gauge or any kind of technique so the selection of prop depends on that particular technique and desired method of detection we want to detect the props through either a radiographic method or either through some uh, chromatographic method like chemiluminescence. So the selection of lab probe and their labeling depends on uh, these criteria. And the three basic methods for labeling nucleic acids are pre present there. First one is the radio labeling in which we use the isotopes and detection method is done through autoradiography. Second method is heptane incorporation. Heptane is basically a small molecule uh, which can uh, elicite any kind of immunity immuno, immunogenic responses here heptane molecule are biotin fluorosine or diosgenin and uh, they will support a non isotopic re isotopic detection by chemiluminescence chemifluorescence or chromogenic technique last method which can be used to label these props are new direct enzyme labeling so uh, depending on the type of work we can choose any of the method to label our props now we will talk about first method which is radio labeling or isotope labeling isotopes are basically uh, they have been used from the long time due to their uh, sensitivity and compatibility of many of the labeling techniques in uh, this techniques nucleic acid props can be labeled with the help of uh, isotopes of phosphorus hydrogen and sulfur and uh, they have been added in nucleotide triphosphate precursors in the appropriate position at alpha or gamma and thereby supporting enzyme mediated transfer of a portion of nucleotide containing the isotope to the molecule being labeled some of the disadvantages associated with isotope labeling are their half-life potential health hazards contaminant of radioactivity purchase cost disposal cost prop stability and usefulness after labeling and the need for relative long detection period so uh, these are the shortcomings uh, associated with the isotope labeling still uh, isotopes are in use so uh, their storage proper storage and um, it is required uh, due to the radioactive half-life of the uh, isotope which are we which we are using or biological half-life of the nucleotide depending on um, the nucleotides props which are radio labeled can be stored in dry ice and uh, frozen below minus 20 to 80 degrees centigrade if possible and storage in frost free freezer is not recommended if we look this process as a whole you can see here it is uh, radioactive uh, p32 radioactive p32 which can be bind bound to this triphosphate at the position alpha 32 uh, pd atp can be synthesized and they can be incorporated in any kind of prop molecule here uh, uh, a simple technique in which this kind of uh, isolabeled 
props have been used uh, which is known as colony hybridization cropping here we can see transfer of um, colonies to nitrocellulose or nylon and then we degrade the bacteria and we add here we add the uh, prop with uh, label dna uh, in this method uh, we can uh, identify this uh, radiograph through x-ray film so here uh, colony hybridization method uh, this uh, technique is isotope labeling method is used to target the particular sequence in the uh, nucleotide present lying within the bacteria uh, so here it is final auto radiograph in which positive we can see positive hybridization will appear like this so this is the uh, isotope labeling using um, isotopes like uh, phosphorus sulfur or hydrogen now um, there are lots of uh, drawbacks we see with uh, isotope labeling mainly they are, they are hazardous to health and also their half-life is a big issue because they can degrade easily with due to their this such kind of small half-life also so there are certain methods which are non-isotopic to label the props uh, in this we will study about biotinyl biotinylization labeling with digoxygenin fluorescence labeling direct enzyme labeling or labeling with fluorescent dyes so biotin uh, uh, digoxygenin and fluorescein labeling support detection by chromogenic method and by chemiluminescence. So uh, let's talk about biotinylation. Biotinylation is basically the addition of biotin to any nucleotide. Biotin is a small water soluble vitamin that can readily incorporate it into a number of biological molecules and after biotinylization they can be uh, prop can be identified either through enzymatically or photochemically the label is linked to nitrophenyl azido group that is converted by uv radiation to highly reactive nitrine that forms stable covalent linkage to dna or rna so biotin biotinylated nucleotides uh, they can be uh, uh, attached to the target uh, sequence with the help of a spacer like here we see bio 11 dutb so 11 representing the spacer arm uh, which attach uh, this biotin to the uh, target uh, nucleotide sequence now biotin can also be used as a reporter uh, with the help of a affinity molecule like uh, here we can see bacterial protein streptavidine can be used as an affinity molecule and with the help of affinity molecule reporter molecule can be bound with certain kind of marker group and these marker groups are basically any kind of fluorophores or enzymes such as alkaline phosphatase or peroxidase which can permit detection via colorimetric assays chemical luminescence assays or fluorescent assay we can understand this process of biotinylation uh, in the following figure like biotin which can be added to any kind of uh, like here it is deoxy uh, uridine triphosphate this is the biotin biotin nucleotide here uh, we uh, put some nicks in the target dna sequence add uh, this biotin and now uh, here it is a target uh, dna molecule the biotinylite nucleotide attached with that target uh, DNA molecule and now this can be detected with the help of this uh, yellow colored uh, affinity affinity molecule which bind marker molecules on its surface and these marker molecules can be any kind of fluorophores and they fluoresce in presence of fluorescent light and can easily be detected so here it is uh, the um, avidine is the affinity molecule and uh, fluorescent marker can any kind of azo dye can be used here the structure of biotin which is a simple uh, vitamin water soluble vitamin small molecule which can easily attach to any kind of biological membrane so it can be used to label the props and can further be used for detection of any kind of target sequences Thank you so much. Further, we will continue in part second.